Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Josh Ellsworth with Stalls and Stalls Transfer Express, and I'm excited that you're joining me for today's webinar, which is all about moving beyond the t-shirt in your apparel decorating business. So we have about an hour together uh, this afternoon if you're on the East Coast uh, of the country, or maybe it's still uh, this morning for you if you're on the West Coast, but we wanna thank all of you for joining us. We had a great uh, pre-registration for this event, so I know you are all working to get logged in uh, right now, and while you're doing that, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about myself, and then we'll jump into the uh, today's presentation. So um, in case you don't know me, um, I've been doing education for stalls and Transfer Express on YouTube for the better part of, gosh, I guess it's been close to uh, 13 years um, at this point, really focused on teaching apparel decorators uh, new things, how-to techniques, uh, very practical advice on how to print certain items. Um, and then really over the last five years, I've been transitioning uh, my content, getting more into the, the sales and marketing side, more into the, the business aspect, um, not only how to make it, but how to make money with it. And so uh, this presentation is a blend of both. We hope to give you some ideas on things to think about and focus on in your business to make you more profitable at the end of the year and also increase your top line uh, revenue numbers. Actually, I'm gonna share some of the key performance indicators that I suggest uh, you measure in your business and keep track of, uh, but we're also gonna have a fair amount of practical how-to advice. I'm in my spare bedroom and our work from home conditions right now, uh, so I don't have the full disposal of all the product in my studio, uh, but that's kind of cool because I just have a heat press that I've owned for uh, nearly five years now, and actually have a vinyl cutter. We won't be using that today, uh, but I have that as well. And I think with just a heat press and a vinyl cutter, you can do a really uh, good business with Transfer Express and stalls uh, backing you up with all the products that are provided. So I want to encourage you uh, to shout out where you're watching from. I see Daryl uh, watching from uh, New Jersey today. So good to see you, Daryl. I see Dawn watching from Southern California. And we have Rebecca from North Carolina, Becky from Idaho, Jan from Texas, Hunter from Southern Maryland, uh, Alfredo from South Texas. We have a, uh, a great amount of folks and I noticed some already starting early with the questions. I would encourage you to ask those questions um, live. I'll stop several times throughout the presentation just to make sure you're getting it and keeping up with everything we're presenting and I'll look back uh, through those questions. So without further ado, let me move over to my slideshow. We're gonna start there. And I'm gonna talk about moving beyond the t-shirt with this how-to training. So uh, number one, um, the mission today. So I mentioned we'd show some how-to uh, things, also get into a little bit of math and how you can make money with this. Uh, but really, when I give a presentation, I am desiring to make you a capable, confident decorator that's in control of your business goals. So that's kind of my motto when I'm bringing content to you as a presenter, um, but it also passes off some of the requirement on you and a prerequisite is that you have business goals. So I always like to start there. Um, think about what you want to accomplish in your business, who you wanna be when you grow up, what you want your business to be uh, when it grows up because I find that a business uh, with a plan, with goals, with benchmarks against those goals to major uh, progress tends to be a more successful and serious business in the long haul. So hopefully if you have those business goals already and you know what they are, I can give you um, a little bit of understanding of capability with transfer types and, and tools for the job and what's available to you. Um, and also the confidence to be able to say yes uh, to the job and know that you are going to have the right combination of technique and transfer to accomplish that job. So again, share feedback, questions, take notes, et cetera. And um, one of the first questions I have for you is what is your um, customer wearing? What is your target customer wearing? And so I usually like to say it all starts with the customer. I've listed some customers that are uh, purchasing from, from you, from apparel decorators. And you'll see everything from schools to businesses, causes, events, dance studios, clothing brands, teams, municipalities, et cetera. And you can probably add more to the list. And some of you service all of these. Some of you only service some of these. But regardless of which ones you service, I would encourage you to think about this is, um, if you're gonna move beyond the t-shirt, you need to think what else the customer has the propensity to purchase. And so for instance, if I'm selling to a team and let's say the particular season that I'm selling to right now is baseball 
and we're not in quarantine, right? At the time, this is normal uh, business conditions, although we ne do need to rethink them a little bit. I need to think other than just the, the team jersey or the t-shirt for the fundraiser for the baseball team, what else um, do parents need to buy or do coaches need to buy or athletic directors need to buy for the players? And what else can the fans have the ability to buy? So when I think of something like baseball, of course, you're going to move beyond the T-shirt and you're going to go into hoodies and um, different uh, standard wearables like that. You probably end up at jackets. You may end up at a bat bag or even a backpack uh, for taking equipment uh, to games or clothing to games. You may end up with uh, stadium seats. So there are all of these products that are connected around a particular target market that I would just recommend you take a list and you brainstorm. Think about the market that you're serving and what products they have the ability to buy because a big part of what we're gonna talk about today is um, something that I call uh, revenue or profit per item, per order, and per customer. And so these are the KPIs. So if you're taking notes, you can certainly watch us afterwards, but I would recommend you write these down uh, if you have a notebook nearby. Um, these are KPIs, what we call key performance indicators. And if you have a goal, let's say you want to sell $100,000 this year or a million dollars this year, whatever the number is for you, you need to have benchmarks, as I mentioned, against that goal. And so when you kind of go below the surface of that top line revenue or that bottom line profit in the big number, what's left in the bank account, you can really want to track it down to as great of level of detail as possible. And so I think the greatest level of detail really uh, in a business is how much money am I making per item? Um, what is my average selling price of each item that I decorate in my business? And if you're able to track that with your accounting system or with your e-commerce provider, however you're logging all of your orders and keeping track of your sales records, I think that's a really critical number. That's at the very um, bottom level of what you can track because it starts with an item and a transaction. And so in the case of even t-shirts, if I can make a little bit more money out of a standard t-shirt sale, then that's going to translate to the next item, which would be the money per order, which would be the amount, the total customer spend. And then ultimately from all of that data tracks up to the total revenue in the business. So um, some techniques to generate more revenue per item uh, we're going to talk about uh, in this class. And um, so one way is to offer a good, better, best selection. So whenever you're selling an item and presenting to a customer, instead of just a basic t-shirt, and I had heard a quote from one of our sales reps yesterday that some customers don't think they can command more than eight to $10 a t-shirt, I would say you need to really take a hard look at how you are targeting your customers and making something that is unique and relevant uh, to them. Because if you can make something that is unique uh, to your business with what you can deliver and relevant to them, you can probably command higher prices than an eight or ten dollar uh, t-shirt. So think about that per item revenue. Um, next is per order. And per order is really uh, relevant to what we're talking about today because when you think of a customer, and I always give the example, if I'm going out and I'm selling to a school, or let's just say a consumer hits my web website and wants to buy a product to support the graduating class of this year that's, that's quarantined or not able to have a graduation. Um, if I'm just merchandising t-shirts on the site, then odds are I'm going to be able to sell one, maybe two t-shirts to an individual customer. Right. If, if they're buying for a family, my family is a family of three. I may buy a T-shirt for myself, my wife and my daughter to show support of a particular cause um, or to support a team, whatever that would be. However, if the product assortment on that website shows not only a T-shirt, but has a hoodie, a, a bag, shorts, a, a jacket, etc., I am a lot more likely to buy a t-shirt plus another item or maybe plus two items. And so that's where we get to the revenue and the profit per order. When you start thinking about your product assortment, then you can start to generate more revenue per order, which can be a key performance indicator uh, for your business. Even if you can take an order that's normally uh, $20 on a t-shirt and somehow push it up to $25 with a throw-in sticker or an additional placement on the shirt, that's a bonus. But when you start merchandising uh, different items, you're sure to generate more revenue per order. And then lastly, of course, when you think about the items, the revenue per order, we get the revenue per customer. And when I look at it across a uh, broader uh, period of time, whether that's six months or a year, 
what was customer X worth to my business? And that basically would show me that I am really maximizing my customers and increasing the average value of the customer per year, or some will get more advanced and measure uh, lifetime customer value. What does it cost to acquire? What is a typical customer life cycle and what is that worth? So these are some analytics. I wanted to start really basic um, with these because I think these are the basic building blocks to uh, the business. Now, as we get into the how-to information, which I know is what a lot of you are here for, um, we have different transfer formulas and i see a comment from christine please don't sell shirts for eight to ten dollars each i agree that uh, lowers the the market price for everybody um but when we start to think about executing on these concepts we really have to have a sound knowledge of how to make the products we sell and that's where i'm going to spend most of my energy and time today is showing you the tools you need to for the job and uh, to make what you sell. And the first product we're gonna start with is GoofProof. This is our most popular ink formula at Transfer Express. I'm gonna hide this slideshow for a second. And so you can see nice up and close and we're gonna work over at the heat press a bit today. So let's get you a nice view of that. I'm working on the Hotronics Auto Clam. I'll talk a little bit more about the press itself uh, in a moment because we'll have some time when I need to cool the press down. Um, I have loaded this heat press on what we call our caddy stand, which is a freestanding stand that goes all the way down to the ground um, that you see here on the floor and is height adjustable. I have it at the lowest setting so you can still kind of get it into the frame when I'm using it a little bit low for me. Normally I would raise it and operate it at chest height roughly, make sure I can still reach the handle uh, to be able to operate it. Now, when you talk about being able to print more items, it's going to be really critical that you have uh, the ability to get the item flat. The key three things on heat printing is time, temperature, and pressure. Uh, time and temperature are pretty easy. They're measured digitally through this press. I know I'm going to get accuracy, uh, but pressure is a big deal when you're moving beyond the t-shirt. A prerequisite for pressure is making sure that you get your item flat. Now, if I'm working, let's say, with a hoodie, that'll be a pretty easy step up on t-shirts and decorating this neon pink hoodie. When I go to load that hoodie on my 16 by 20 platen, uh, if you don't have a threadable press, meaning I can split and load it on, typically you're gonna lay it on here. Um, you're gonna have some bulk build up. Um, of course, you're in by the heat when you're kind of loading this way with the t-shirt or the hoodie right side up. Um, so a lot of people will still load upside down and place their transfer upside down. That way you're at the widest part of the press if you're operating on a clamshell. But you can see on this um, hoodie with, this is a youth large, it's very tough to get it flat. I have um, some bulk in here. I have the structure of the pocket on the hood. These are areas that are going to receive pressure when I lock it down. Now, when you start to try to increase the selling price of each item, which was one of our KPIs, you're gonna go into some more premium hoodies. You're gonna go into uh, higher end fabrics, maybe 100% polyester performance hoodie would be good for that travel, basketball team, baseball team, whatever it may be to generate more revenue per item. That's part of the good, better, best. Now the challenge is while a cotton hoodie, I can probably get by with just kind of pressing this and not leaving any marks. Um, you load a poly hoodie in here and you lock this down and this pocket receives more pressure than your main print area, it's going to cause that to gloss up and scorch and you're really going to have uh, quality issues on the products you're delivering. And so you need to make sure you have the right tools to get your item flat. And for those of you that are familiar with the stalls presses, the, the easiest way is through interchangeable attachments. You see this latch under here? I call it the lightning latch because it's really quick to change. You're just going to unlock that. And without any tools, you're able to slide. Let me make sure I can get a hold of it correct. You're able to slide that out and unload that plan. It's just a pin re registration system. I've been working with the 16 by 20. If you haven't purchased the heat press yet and you're wondering what size to buy, I always recommend go bigger, 16 by 20, because you can always load a smaller attachment. This is an 11 by 15 inch attachment. So I'm just gonna drop that into place, make sure it's seated down in, and then lock my lever into place. And now I have the ability to isolate my print area, get it flat to ensure not only am I not having seams and things that may get damaged or scorched up, but really getting accurate pressure where I'm going to place my transfer on the front 
of the hoodie. So if you're uh, a little bit more experienced, we'll get into some more complex stuff here shortly, but I wanted to make sure we had the basic building blocks down of time, temperature, and pressure. It's really important if you're just starting out that you get this print area flat. Now notice how all my seams and everything are hanging off the edge. Even my pocket is off the back edge here and I have a completely flat area. At that point, I'm just going to preheat and be able to adjust my pressure. Pressure adjustment on the heat press typically happens over the center on the stalls machines. And I'm just gonna preheat to make sure I have good pressure that I have a nice flat printing area to work with. Now, the cool thing when you're working with screen printed transfers is you are purchasing, when you buy from Transfer Express, you're purchasing this whole sheet. And depending on the ink formula, the sheets can come in different sizes. Our Goof Proof, which is the one I'm gonna use here, it's our most popular, our Elasti Prints, our Hot Split, um, and even our standard special effect ones, they're always gonna be on this 11 and a quarter by 14 inch sheet. And the cool thing about this, this was an actual job that I printed. I printed it live on air on our Stalls Facebook page and Transfer Express Facebook page a couple weeks back um, for teachers at our school. And so I needed this teachers, the one where we were quarantined 2020 with the face mask. I just designed that right within Easy View, which is the designer over on TransferExpress.com that's free to you if you're ordering transfers from us. Um, I needed two of those. I was able to fit two a sheet, but you know what? I had this extra space in the middle I didn't want to waste. So I popped in faith over fear, and then put the name of the church that's associated with this uh, Christian school that we were decorating for. Um, there is a lot of real estate, so I've seen some of your gang sheets. Some of you would use this for a small logo, use this space. You're paying for the sheet, so as much as you wanna use your scissors, you can fit designs on this, and I'll show you how to do that. So that way, um, it naturally leads into additional print locations if you can generate profit out of it and additional items that you can print. So we're starting with the hoodie. I wanted to show you the basics of being able to print that. In this case, I'm gonna do the church related design since I may gift this to somebody. I don't know that we have any teachers there that are wearing youth large t-shirts. So I'm gonna do uh, this goof proof and goof proof uh, can be positioned. It has a grid line on back. You always do wanna make sure that you're positioning it properly, the right direction since I'm loaded upside down. I'll position it there. And Goof Proof applies at 360 degrees for three to five seconds. Today, I'm cheating a little bit. I have it at 340 degrees for 10 seconds, which is an alternate uh, application. And the reason I'm using this is because most of what I'm applying today is gonna be at a lower temp. And I don't want you to wait all day for the temperature to get there. So auto open press, I'm gonna heat press that. And I'm gonna take a look in at some of the questions. Looks like everybody's just saying hello still and I'm gonna peel it hot when it's done and we have a completed result. So those of you that are already buying from Transfer Express and know what screen printed transfers are, you know being able to do this is really easy uh, to press goof proof. It um, feels great, you get that screen printing ink feel and the key to be able to print this on different items is getting your item flat. And so there we go, that's a hoodie. That's our first step in moving beyond the t-shirt and our first tip is Make sure you have the right attachment and get your item completely flat. While we have this attachment on, you gotta come straight up to be able to remove it and rotate it. That's why you can't do it from an angle. I'm just gonna rotate it 90 degrees and know that we can use it this way to print other items as well. So another item, this was the actual item I printed for the job, is a bag. And so if you can split and load this bag, this is a 100% uh, canvas bag, which is canvas is really a cotton-based material. Uh, just a natural color. I'm able to split that on. And again, get the print area completely flat. So not everything fits perfectly like I have here. And I'll show you some tougher examples, more difficult examples here in a second. But I wanted you to see just how easy it can be to decorate multiple items. Now with bags, make sure you don't load it upside down or you'll have a ruined bag. Because remember the opening of the bag allows you to load it right side up position my design. It's gonna run a little bit higher because when the bag fills up with goodies, I want your design to sit a little bit higher on the bag and you're just going to apply. So often, even with a small logo, you can fit it on your gang sheet that you're already decorating the t-shirt with and be able to do an accessory item such as an inexpensive bag um, like I've done here. And so think about that. Think about how you can move and do those different things. Again, we have a completed result and just 
three to five seconds or 10 seconds since I'm running at the lower temp. So I'm gonna glance in at questions. I'm gonna work my heat press down. For the rest of my applications, I need to be down closer to 275 to 300. So I'm gonna split the difference and do it. I think 288 is the difference between that. We'll let that cool down and let me show off some of these accessories and take some of your uh, questions. So let's see, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. I'm over on transferexpress.com. And on transferexpress.com, you can get to a lot of things. I just wanna point out a couple things. One is uh, heat presses. If you're interested in a threadable heat press, you don't have one, you can go to our heat press packages link. And I'm gonna show you the package that I helped put together for heat presses that has all the accessories that I think you'll need. Um, most of them, I should say, not all of them. In this case, this is the 16 by 20 auto open that I have uh, that I'm using today. It has the cover. Now it also has the 11 by 15 quick change attachment that we've just used. And we're gonna use the six by 10 attachment later. I think between the 16 by 20, the 11 by 15 and the six by 10, you can do nearly everything that you wanna do. Um, those are the only ones that I've ever owned on my personal press and I've been able to do anything um, that, that I wanna do. The exception to that is if you wanna do long sleeves or pant legs, you may wanna buy the double sleeve platen uh, to be able to do those locations with transfers. Now, the other thing I wanna point out to you, this does um, come with the $150 product credit and I would highly recommend that you put that credit towards a caddy uh, stand. And so to get to the stands, you're just gonna go up under heat presses and go to accessories. And if you already own a heat press from stalls, this will show you some of the accessories you may wanna build out with. I would get this heat press stand there is a countertop version as well that's a little less expensive. That's really going to allow you to split and load more items and make the best use of your interchangeable attachments. And we'll use it a little bit later, but these print perfect pads are really important for being able to do tight spots and locations on items. So some variety of print perfect pads are really gonna help you when you're printing transfers. I find myself using the five by six inch um, most often, or you can get the three and a half by 15 inch for sleeves, um, as I had mentioned. So I wanted to make sure you got a, a look at those products in Transfer Express. And before I leave there, I also just wanna show you the Easy View Designer. Some of you already know how to use this, so I'm not gonna go in depth, but I want you to, I want you to see that when you go to transferexpress.com, and as long as you have an account, you can go to the Design Center and you're logged in and click Start Designing. That will drop you into this Easy View Design Center where you can really select your colors, see a representation of your sheet size, whether it's goof proof or whatever you're designing, and be able to space your design and make uh, use of the sheet as much as uh, possible. So these are all tools to, to help you be able to move beyond the t-shirt and uh, print more items. So let me take a look here at some of the questions coming in. All right, question about do the wheels lock on the caddy? Yes, they, they absolutely lock. Um, so I wheel mine often between the garage and the kitchen. Usually I had to bring it all the way back to the bedroom, uh, but usually I just keep it on a small landing pad in my garage and I brought it into the kitchen when I wanted to watch TV and heat press when football's on. All right. And then, um, a question here is LK asks, how can you print on reversible sequin mermaid, uh, pillowcases? That's a mouthful. Uh, Usually those are a polyester base, uh, the sequin product. So the cool result that I've seen is sublimation. You really won't be able to use a screen printed transfer or heat transfer vinyl or anything like that because it would like cover the seams and they wouldn't separate. But sublimation is a uh, transfer type that's available from stalls.com that you can sublimate uh, those. And we have some videos on our stalls TV YouTube page that show you how to print those. All right, Jim says, love my 16 by 20 auto. Yeah, it's one of the best. All right, sorry, if you're having connection issues, I'm not having connection issues on my side, so um, hopefully everybody's seeing this clearly. I saw some, one person wasn't. Um, Alan asks, any thoughts on decorating non-wearable items such as craft pieces, keepsakes, et cetera? Um, I always say try it because uh, you'd be surprised. I have people that have used uh, transfers and things on greeting cards and paper and cardstock. And so there's actually more than you that you can decorate 
with these products than even what we recommend, especially if that product won't be laundered. So I've had, I've personally applied uh, a transfer to cork board uh, before. I've seen customers where they've applied it to wood. Um, so it's not like sublimation where you're gonna be able to dye the surface if it's polymer coated, but you can try these transfers across a wide variety of items. And I um, actually used this press to heat press the cork board. It was for a teacher appreciation uh, gift a few years back. And this press, even though it's a clamshell, will allow you to press items up to five eighths inch thick. So just with that pressure adjustment knob, given the fact that it's over the center, you have a lot of flexibility with the thickness of the item that you can that you can get in uh, to the machine. All right, and Freddie asks a good question. He says, let's say you can fit five images on a sheet. Do you recommend we charge per image or the sheet? I would say you always want to weight the cost into what you've sold. So sometimes you'll get free ride along space on a sheet like I had on this particular job that we just pressed where I could have put something here and probably used it later. And that would have been sunk cost for me. It would have been free on my next job. But I would recommend that um, you, you calculate cost for the full sheet for whatever you have uh, sold. And um, as far as charge, I charge for the decorated garment. So I wouldn't really let customers know how much I can fit on a sheet. I would charge for what the market can command for the decorated piece. And if you can cut cost out of it as the decorator, that means more profit per, for you. And that's a great thing for the business. So you can really form the sales strategy to maximize the sheet. So think through that. Okay. Um, and Lori asked the question I haven't been able to answer in my career here. She says, any ideas how to put a team logo on a latex swim cap? I haven't been able to solve uh, heat pressing onto those latex swim caps. It's probably the only thing we haven't been able to solve here. So sorry about that. All right, let's, uh, let's keep moving. I wanna show you some more stuff. So um, I won't pull the slideshow back up, but the Number two was how to move beyond the t-shirt with ElastiPrints. Now, ElastiPrints is just another ink formula from Transfer Express. So whereas there's goof proof that takes 340 to 360 degrees of heat, well, that's gonna scorch a lot of the items that you wanna load onto your press and cause an issue. So if you're gonna go into different constructions of items, sometimes the 300 degrees that ElastiPrints applies at is going to save that item from scorching and becoming damaged. And so I find myself leaning on print techniques like ElastiPrints and some other ones that we're gonna talk about, which is Stretch Litho and Aquatru here in a moment, when I need uh, lower temp or special adhesive uh, properties. So we're gonna press some ElastiPrints on, and I wanted to talk really about maximizing the gang sheet, and I've been decorating uh, the face covers with this gang sheet, so it's a little bit uh, chopped up here, but you can see um, this gang sheet has about 15, 20 images on it, um, just in white. And so of course, when you're doing a screen printed transfer, it needs to be all the same ink color, at least for the formulas we've talked about so far, but you can fit really small logos. This one says Sheffield Towing, and I trimmed one from here prior to our time together that it's tough to see, but it says Sheffield Heating and Cooling on this little piece. You can kind of see it at that angle. And so we're gonna take just this small print, which is a fraction of a sheet, where we've grouped up customer orders and decorate it. When I survey people selling on Etsy, um, you see them leveraging this technique a lot. They're able to just order white transfers and then they really let the color be the garment because that will simplify your ordering and your manufacturing when you're using screen printing or screen printed transfers and allow you to make more money. And so on this one, I'm gonna teach a little bit different technique. I'm gonna decorate this uh, backpack. So it's just a small backpack. You can see it has a really tight print location. I could swap this out and move to a six by 10 inch uh, platen uh, to try to get this print area flat. I'm not sure that's gonna work for me. And so what I'll do is I'm actually gonna unzip the major part of the backpack. I'm gonna split and try to thread that on to my 11 by 15. Make sure it can clear it and it can. All right, and now I have the whole thing up here. Now. This has, um, it can have plastic zippers or metal zippers, doesn't really matter. The thing I wanna do is I wanna get rid of 
uh, the zippers and be able to just isolate my print surface. And so this is where those print perfect pads are really gonna come into play. And so this was, I think the five by six inch size, and it's the same material that's on the bottom of your heat press. These are gonna be your best friend because you can take these and you can insert them underneath the bag in that print location, making sure you get it as flat as you can and that the seams are falling off the edge. And so that's what I'm able to do here. It brings the print area up above these zippers and all of the detail and construction that's there. Now, you have to be careful because if um, you don't wanna melt this together. And so a six by 10 inch may actually be better because then I'll be able to hang this off. Um, so let me try that. Maybe I wanna use my six by 10 inch platinum in combination with this. So just another little size that swaps on and off. Lock it in. Now let's try that. So yeah, I'm not able to completely get rid of these seams. This one is still up on the press and gonna cause an issue. So I'll still use the print pad on top of my six by 10. Slide it in there. If you're doing a lot of these, I've seen people uh, secure it down or tape it down, but it's pretty easy to just slide on and off. And now I have a nice, I'm kind of feeling that and making sure it's flat and everything falls off the edge. And I'm able to do my uh, pressure adjustment now with the new platen. I always use a cover sheet, not for applying the transfers, but just while I'm checking my pressure and trying to get everything set up. because I don't want to damage the bag during this process as I'm kind of working with it. Keep in mind when you change that platen, you don't really need to go crazy on the applied pressure because you're getting a lot of pressure onto this small print surface. And this is really profitable, guys. Take a branding of a small logo. Take a peek here, position that into place where you want it. Never use a cover sheet with these standard screen printed transfers. And I'm gonna press it at the 300 degrees for 15 seconds. And it's a cold peel. So I'll wait till it cools completely down. Anytime I'm working with a cold peel material, which Elasti Prince is, um, I always like to just catch the handle, the auto open to make sure it's not going to create a vacuum effect and kind of lift that transfer backing. Um, I see a question here that came in that's relevant from Mary. It says, can you stack the pads? And the answer is yes. You can absolutely stack the pads and you can even, I must have it somewhere else, you can even cut apart the pads. I've cut apart the pads with scissors. Of course, that ruins it. But if you need to hit a really tight print location, sometimes you can justify the cost of that pad um, it for the job and sink it into the job. And then you have little pieces of pads to do different things as you're uh, moving along. So I'm gonna let this cool down. I'm just gonna zip the bag back up and we'll let it uh, cool down on the side here for a second and I'll peel it for you uh, momentarily. Yeah, so Alan says, good question, Mary. I agree. The, um, the pads, I wanna say are about a quarter of an inch. So uh, you should be able to fit at least two pads uh, stacked. You might be really uh, pushing it if you go three pads thick. So I wouldn't see if you would need to do three pads. So that's ElastiPrint. So we've talked about moving beyond the t-shirt with Goofproof, moving beyond the t-shirt with ElastiPrint. I wanna get into some different items while we wait on that to cool down and keep the questions coming in. And uh, lost my place before I move forward. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm presenting is it seems like some of our customers that do business with Transfer Express don't necessarily do business with stalls and uh, stalls.com and then vice versa. And so always when I'm doing a stalls.com presentation, I like to say, here's the benefits of screen printed transfer and when you should use them and vice versa. You really need both heat transfer vinyl in your business as the industry calls it and screen printed transfers to be able to do the job. So one concept that I had done for this bag, just to show you a different technique in a different location is I've cut some personalization uh, for the arm, uh, for the straps here that would go um, over the shoulder and show to the front. Cause really think about it. What we're selling here is branded apparel. And so if you can increase the visibility of the item that you're decorating, it should resonate with the customer of thinking about how can I decorate that on this side? So whether I say Sheffield uh, heating and cooling on this side, or in this case, I've just cut a personalized name. And so when you wanna do stuff like this, it's very easy. I'm just going to 
kind of load it over and I can adjust the strap length, but you can see I'm trying to get rid of this plastic clip. It's just gonna lay right onto this six by 10 platen. Um, and I could easily bring both straps and decorate them at once and create my pressing area. So again, I need to adjust my pressure since now I've taken the pad out. And this has a digital pressure, so I'm just trying to get up to like a five. I'm at a three. There we go, four will work. And what I've done is I've, I wanna create some name personalization. So in advance, I have my vinyl cutter here. I've cut a name out of a product that we just launched yesterday. We did the, or May 1st, we did the live launch party. That was Friday, I guess. And it's called Ultraweed. And so Ultraweed is the latest heat transfer vinyl product that's on the market. Um, it's very easy to weed. As you see here, it pulls away without breaking. And if you have a vinyl cutter, whether that is a Roland or a Graph Tech, or even if it's a Cricut or a Silhouette or a Brother Scan and Cut, there's a ton of different vinyl cutters out on the market. Uh, you can cut Ultra Weed on that vinyl cutter and you can purchase it by the roll from stalls.com. We do have weaving tools that make this job easier, but I'm just gonna peel it away. And then after it's peeled away, I'll have the completed personalization. And so I often combine personalized names on the back of a shirt with a, or a back of a, uh, an item with the decorated corporate logo or team logo, because personalization does what? It not only makes it personal for the wearer and interested, it creates, it increases that KPI that we were talking about, the average selling price per item. So in this case, I'm at the 290 degrees. This is a low temp material that will actually press as low as 260 degrees. I'm just gonna press it for 12 seconds and I'm able to easily customize uh, additional locations um, on the item. It's a hot peel, it actually fell right off with my heat press, but you can see very easy to be able to brand that um, and looks great. So now I've created a fully customized backpack on the back and then on the front when I peel away my transfer to reveal my Sheffield heating and cooling design. So pretty, pretty neat, pretty profitable. I would encourage you think about these types of items and how you can increase what you can make with your heat press. All right, got some questions. Yeah, on some of the older stalls presses, I see some conversation about that. Um, you can still change the platen if you have an old swing away press or a draw press, usually there's two screws. Um, it's actually, um, I should call them knobs. Uh, on both sides that you can unscrew to pop that plan out and change it. If you have an older version of the auto clam, uh, typically there are, there's a screw underneath the plan. It's just not a quick change, but it can still be changed out uh, with a wrench or a ratchet set, something like that. All right. Next product I'm going to move to, that was Elasti Prince, is I'm going to move on to AquaTrue. So AquaTrue is a water-based transfer. And the reason I like AquaTrue for moving beyond the t-shirt is it really just has a lot of benefits as far as what it can stick to. Uh, yes, the minimums are higher. So you're gonna have to have a higher volume of whatever it is you're decorating. But if you're decorating for a big event or a, a large opportunity with AquaTrue, um, you're still paying per color, but you have a really large sheet size that you can gang up designs on and you're able to apply this product, not only to cotton and polyester, but the nylon fabrics. So it gives you a solution for decorating nylon as well. And we start to see nylon when we're moving beyond the t-shirt to uh, you know, different items, whether that be uh, bags or jackets or outerwear. In this case, I wanted to show you how easy it is to decorate um, a safety vest. And so you can see the reflective stripes are already built into the vest. And these vests right now, it's polyester based, so I could use another transfer type. Uh, but these vests right now are really good for a lot of the essential industries that are open. So whether that is for food delivery services or um, whatever it might be like uh, testing sites and, and healthcare workers and anybody that's gonna be out and delivering traffic um, or conducting traffic, these vests as they're typically sold, and this one is a cornerstone uh, style, um, they are already 
compliant and certified for visibility. Now, when you're decorating something like this, you need to get these reflective stripes off of the press, otherwise it's going to damage them. And so in this case, I use this 11 by 15 platen. The reflective stripes just hang below. I'm able to preheat and adjust my pressure. And then I'll take my AquaTrue transfer, doing a concept where it'd be like for an event, position it, and heat apply for the recommended time, temperature, and pressure. So it's not that complex to move beyond the t-shirt, but it does take, um, take you being intentional, not only in how you sell to your customers, but how you um, outfit your capability as far as equipment, the heat press you have, the tools you have for the job, the transfer knowledge you have on what sticks to what and what's achievable. And so in this case, we already have the certified vest so we can easily apply AquaTrue uh, for an event or for whatever is happening out there. And we have a customized item. And part of the benefit is we are going to generate more profit on something that's been customized with a product like AquaTrue because it's typically a higher end item than a basic uh, t-shirt. So another thing I always tell people is it's going to take you the same amount of time to print one t-shirt as it would take you in the grand scheme of things to print one jacket, one safety vest, one performance polo, right? There's a little bit of cost difference on the transfer formula that you're ordering, a little bit more risk if you ruin one, I get that. But in the grand scheme of things, all of the science and the technology is built into the transfer itself. All you need to do is get your item flat and make sure you follow the recipe. Now the difference between let's say a $12 t-shirt and a $40 jacket is probably 15 to $20 in profit to your business every time the press locks down. So even if you're not selling it at the same profit margin, you're going to be making more profit per piece with your time. And that is really important for small shops especially uh, because opportunity costs and your time and what you're spending it on is really key. You don't wanna be standing at the heat press for a dollar in profit, uh, a t-shirt all day. You, you of course want the business, but you should be using that business as a catalyst to get into other categories and increase uh, your item price, your sale price, et cetera. So performance polo, just wanna show you another concept here. Um, this one is either a dip dye or sublimated. I'm not real uh, sure, but I'm not real afraid of it either way because I'm gonna show you a ink formula that will solve it. And that is uh, extra version of our AquaTrue, which is called AquaTrue dye block. So AquaTrue dye block has a, a charcoal backing that would block dyes from coming through. So even higher end items like sublimated polos that have effects and graphics to them, or even motocross jerseys can be conquered with uh, ink formula like AquaTrue dye block. Again, I'm just gonna position it into place. I don't want you to wait all day for me to change my platen. Six by 10 is the right size for this because I still have a little bit of the seam structure up here on the side from the sleeve. But given the interest of time, I'm just gonna press it like this. I am gonna have to use a cover sheet. And so I'm going to just increase the time a few seconds on this because I don't wanna ruin my press. I don't want the ink from the sublimated item to bleed up through my press. So it's best on those types of jobs to use a uh, disposable cover sheet to be able to apply your AquaTrue dye block. And that would be our definite formula for doing these sublimated items. Um, and Lori asked, what would be the reasoning to use AquaTrue uh, rather than another ink. And really when you're using AquaTrue, it's if you want nylon adhesion or you want um, a different, it's a different feel and texture. It's, it's water-based, so it's more like a buttery soft feel rather than the traditional Plastisol ink feel. Um, and so definitely if you need to stick to a tough item like a nylon, if you wanna go for that feel or that stretchability that it has, or if you wanna do something that's sublimated like this, getting the AquaTrue dye block to make sure that white stays white and this pattern that's in the polo or whatever item that you're decorating isn't gonna bleed through. So a little bit more technical uh, to work with and use, but when we look at our commercial level sales, we see a lot of big brands and large volume customers in the promotional space using a lot of AquaTrue 
because of what it can uh, deliver to you in the business from a performance standpoint. So if you want to order one transfer that works on everything, a lot of people will just centralize with, with AquaTrue, knowing that, you know, it won't work at 24 pieces of a job, but it's geared towards the higher quantity. So it depends on who you're selling to. Um, Lori, uh, yeah, the AquaTrue would definitely work on competition swimwear, as long as it's a poly, nylon, lycra, spandex based, um, I would have no concerns with it working on that. All right, and I appreciate Mike over at Transfer Express helping me answer these questions as we uh, go along. Um, Jim, glad we could share the info on decorating the straps for you. And yeah, so for those of you that have an older Hotronics clam, you can still change out the platen. You just need to make sure when you order the platens, don't order the quick change ones. Make sure you give us the model num number of your press and Hotronics still makes those platens to fit the older machines or upgrade into a new heat press when you're ready. All right, and I think we're, yeah, Alan asked me if I can briefly discuss the pressure adjustment when using smaller platens again. Yes, absolutely. So when you normally have this heat press and you're pressing on a 16 by 20 inch platen, the applied pressure from the press is being distributed over that 16 by 20 full base surface area. And so when we say you need a seven pressure, that seven pressure assumes across a 16 by 20 inch base. Now, to keep it easy for you startups, feel free to use a seven on these smaller platens as well. It's not going to ruin what you're doing, but it may ruin your garment. And what I mean by that is if you're decorating something that's performance polyester like I'm wearing, and I press that at a seven for that six by 10 attachment on this left chest graphic, I'm, I'm most definitely gonna get a mark here on that. So when you're dealing with heat sensitive fabrics, um, sometimes pressure is the culprit. Um, and so what we always say is that seven on a 16 by 20 for the pressure on an 11 by 15 is gonna be like a five. And on a six by 10, it's gonna be like a three. So just make sure you bring your pressure down because that pressure is being applied to a smaller surface area. So you're actually getting more pressure than you think, even if your setting's only at a three. That's why you always see the heat press markings on small logos, small platen, small print pads when you're isolating that surface. Um, so hopefully that helps. And that's similar to when you see the markings on seams. It's because that seam that's slightly raised above everything else that you let hang over on the corner of your press is getting all that pressure and so sure enough, it scorches up and you ruin the garment. Um, the height of the caddy, can it easily be adjusted by one person? Carol asks. Um, adjusted down, I would say yes. Um, all you do is you're gonna pull this out and you're able to adjust it. So me pushing it down evenly, do it while the press is off is no problem. Adjusting it up, you may need somebody to just pull that out while you grab it from both sides and lift it up. So I would say a helper would be nice uh, for adjusting it. Okay, and then last thing before I move on to our other applications, just to make sure we get them. Lori says red shirt, red shirts mark no matter what I do, but goes away when it's cooled. Um, yeah, so if you have red, burgundy, pink, and it's has a lot of cotton in it, it's going to deepen in color because what happens when you press it, the moisture leaves the garment. And so when the moisture returns to the garment after a couple hours, it'll go back to the normal color. Don't panic. Um, if you're handing it straight to your customer, you can always mist it. Uh, with water or with like a, a magic spray sizing that's sold at uh, Walmart. Um, but for the most part, people just let those sit for a half hour, an hour, and it goes back to the original color. Whereas when you're decorating polyester, if you scorch it and leave a mark, you have ruined the shirt. It's not going to come back because uh, you've actually damaged those polyester fibers. All right, I'm going to keep moving. I see a couple more questions coming in. I will come back to them. I'm um, talking about moving beyond the t-shirt to generate more profit for your business. One of my favorite new products. If you watched any of my videos, you know I've been hyping this one for, for a while because I really think it solves a lot of uh, the complexity of the business um, and, and really serves that purpose of making you a capable and confident decorator, perhaps with just one product. And so that product is called Stretch Litho Mat. If you haven't used this product before, um, take a hard look at it. I'm going to explain to you some of the benefits. Um, this is a product that really helps you move even beyond single color and two color logos. Uh, there are no color limitations. I like to call this a digital screen printed transfers. The fact that there's multiple colors across here, um, but yet it's also screen printed on the back 
right? And so we get the benefits of screen printing with how it uh, feels and the level of detail we can achieve, but we get the benefits of digital printing in that we're not gonna have to pay for every color that's in this design. I mean, this would cost a fortune. There's probably 30, 40 colors um, in this design. So it's all one flat price when it comes to stretch litho mat. And I love this because I can group multiple customer jobs up on one sheet and really be able to decorate a wide variety of items. So this will bring in one of my tips. When you are decorating and you plan to take that logo for a web store, or whatever it may be, across different products beyond a basic t-shirt, try to centralize on one size for the graphic. Um, I find that a three and a half by three and a half logo space will decorate a backpack nice. It'll decorate a left chest, whether that's on a zip up like I have or a quarter zip or a polo. Um, that graphic size is also usually a nice uh, print for an add-on location on a sleeve or um, small center chest on a t-shirt or a youth t-shirt or ladies t-shirt, especially like a slimmer cut style. Um, it's also usually the logo I can use on a, a pair of pants uh, next to the, the left thigh or right thigh on the pocket or pair of shorts down at the knee. So try to think about a size because when you get a size that works, and I think this Potomac softball club is a good example of it, I can use this logo, I can order 20 sheets of this, and I can use this logo across a wide variety of products uh, when I sell them for this particular company. And I've talked to decorators that will set their business model up where they'll charge the customer for the logos, they'll stock the logos, and then they'll decorate to order. It's especially popular in the corporate space for new employee hires um, when you wanna do an onboarding package, being able to decorate you know, five items for that newly hired employee for that company, it's huge in the promo space. So stretch litho mat, some of the other benefits I like about it is it applies at a low temp. So this is a 270 degree product, which means I'm gonna be able to conquer a wide variety of fabric types uh, without scorching and use one product on my t-shirts or my performance uh, polyester, uh, backpacks, whatever it might be. So that is stretch litho mat. I think it's your secret weapon and I know a lot of you will say um, you don't have enough orders to be able to fill that whole sheet and make use of it. And so the exciting news, in case you missed it, is we just launched Stretch Litho Mat by the single image. So you can literally, if you're decorating something for the Compton Corner Bakery Shop here, and you only need to do 20 bags, you can just order 20 logos. So the minimum for the per image is 20. We have various image sizes. So this is one of those image sizes. We also have a super, you know, like a small or an extra small image size. So you can order just exactly what you need in that stretch litho formula. Yes, you're gonna pay a little bit more per logo than if you could fill the whole sheet, but it allows you to stick with one formula and get the job done as long as you get at least 20 pieces um, of the transfer that you want to purchase. And so that's that's kind of awesome when you think about it. And so for this job, I just want to decorate this uh, tote bag and show you another opportunity here. This one has a pocket. And so I'm going to split it open again. Always work to get that item flat is rule number one of heat printing. And then see if I can find my print pad I was using. Hopefully it'll fit in the pocket of this bag. Yep, I'm gonna slide it down into the pocket of the bag. Try to make sure it's somewhat centered where I wanna print. And when you slide into the pocket, it does prevent the pocket from sticking to itself. If you're doing a, a bag that has a lining inside of the pocket, which you see on a lot of denier poly um, garments. Um, and I'm not going to, we're never going to lab certify this, but when people are decorating accessory items like bags, um, I see a lot of cheating. I see a lot of people that will use a product on a nylon that's not recommended for a nylon. That's because it will stick and stay often. It just, we won't certify it because it won't go through 50 washes. But I don't know a single person ever that's gonna wash their bag or their jacket 50 times. So you can do some independent testing and take some liberties to create kind of some unique value to be able to do some things that other people are like, hmm, how did they do that? Uh, because uh, you are experimenting and doing some things. So I'm gonna position this design. I'm feeling to make sure I get pressure on all parts of the image. That's really critical that you don't have any drop off in pressure. For stretch litho, we do recommend you use a cover sheet because it is a cold peel. Um, and sometimes there's a little bit of static in this or maybe adhesive from the sheet that was on top of it. We don't want to stick to the heater and start to peel, but then I'm just gonna go ahead and press it for my uh, application. Stretch Litho 270, 
12 to 15 seconds. Uh, usually if there's cotton in the garment, I like to give it a little bit more on the temp or the time. Uh, I find that cotton is, is more challenging for these low temp materials, so give it a little bit more. It's not gonna damage it at all. Open, and then we're gonna let that cool. While that's cooling, let's see we have a nice completed result. Um, on there, I wanna press one more item and I always like to try myself and do something I haven't done before on these lives because if I mess it up, you learn from it and you're like, ah, I can't do that. Uh, and if it works, you're like, ah, I can go sell that right away. And so one of those items that I wanted to do today uh, with Stretch Litho was this 100% um, it's from independent trading company. And you can see it has this um, polyester shell to it. And it's a little smoother surface than what you would think of um, a, a woven uh, polyester. And so jackets are a big category with a lot of profit. And we're gonna go for the left chest print location on this. So I'm just gonna split and thread it on because I've already set my heat press up for this print perfect pad. I'll steal it back out of the bag I just did. And I will unzip here and slide it into my left chest print location on the jacket to raise it above the zipper and just hanging the zipper down off of the edge. Um, I've heard some questions on left chest placement. Usually what I like to do is I pinch top shoulder right where the collar uh, meets the top shoulder. So that would be right here on this garment. And then I do a measurement down. Um, I have it pretty good by eye. And honestly, there's a lot of latitude with where you place that because branding is kind of cool when it's up a little higher or larger or something like that. But the rule is six to eight inches down, depending on the size of your jacket from this location for the center of your graphic. So I always do pinch that location. So I at least make sure I'm not gonna do an under the arm print. Um, I'm going to preheat this using my cover sheet, a little bit delicate on the fabric here because I don't have the extra thickness of the bag. I do need more pressure. Get a nice flat print area. I'm just going to take this small transfer. It says Compton Electrical. You can see a bunch of different colors in there, clear carrier, so I'm able to see right through it and position that into place. Pinch this, make sure I'm centered. Looks great. Cover it with a cover sheet and heat apply. Taking some risks. Let me look in at some questions. Yeah, so uh, Dennis must have asked something about adjusting the pressure. So yeah, when you change platens, you definitely want to adjust your pressure because the thickness of the platens is always just slightly different. So this is looking good so far. On cold peel materials, you wanna be careful that you're not gonna like be too rough when you're taking it off the press. So let me slide that pad out and delicately um, slide the jacket off. And we're gonna let that cool down, but I have no markings or anything. So I have high hopes of our finished result here. This one is just about cool. A lot of people are messing up stretch litho prints. Um, when we say cold peel, we mean cold peel. doesn't mean you need to throw it in a refrigerator, but it does mean that it needs to be down to room temperature before you peel it. So if you're impatient like me uh, and you have an outside wall nearby or a cold cookie sheet, just hold your item against that wall um, for a little bit. That'll pull the heat out of it just a little bit quicker so I can peel it. Yeah, this uh, Matt asked the question, what product? This is Dretch Litho Matt. I'll show it to you. I'll show you all of these ink formulas on the website here in just one second. After it's been applied, then I'm going to grab the corner and peel the excess away. See, cold peel should peel right away. And I have a completed result. I mean, look how beautiful that is. All those colors on a single layer. And then when you think you can just buy 20 of those for a job, um, I mean, it's lots of profit, lots of profit available here, especially when you're doing uh, full sheets like this. If you can drive a lot of your business into this product, it'll really unlock uh, amazing profit potential is what I believe. And this one should be, yeah, this one's cooled down too. Let's try our jacket here. Nice. All right. We're making money today. So it's tough to see my lights kind of blinding it out, but there you go. You can see Compton Electrical. Uh, it's been applied. We have a great result. If ever you're pressing stretch litho and you see 
this is little hairline of adhesive. That's part of the nature of the product. You're going to get a little bit of a clear outline. I would say it's not noticeable on most products, but because this is a smooth jacket and it was on Navy, I am seeing it. And so it bothers me enough that I would just want to load my item back onto my press and just for finished quality, uh, hit it again with a cover sheet. Um, and when you press your item again with a cover sheet, it will kind of blend that in a little more and it will be less noticeable. So just quick, you don't have to do a full application. It's already on there for good. Just give it three to five seconds or something. Enough to apply it. Yeah, and that looks much, much better in my estimation and actually made the transfer look more like it's a part of the garment with how it feels in there. So stretch litho mat has like a siliconized feel to it. You've never met a digital transfer product that, that, that looks and feels and performs like this. So I've made the bold prediction. I think this will be our number one product in three years. That's how much I believe in this product and what it can do. So let's see, we're up on an hour here. I'm going to give you guys a bonus 15 minutes, but let me share my website before I take some final questions and show you exactly where to find these products we've discussed. When you go to transferexpress.com, we talked about four products today that will help you move beyond the t-shirt. Under They're all under our heat transfer section. The standard goof proof and elasti prints are gonna be right under our traditional screen printed transfer section, okay? The AquaTrue, which was our solution for nylon um, that, that um, and also um, a solution for higher volume with the more buttery feel is gonna be under water-based transfer. That's a new transfer technology. You should try it out and sample it. And then our stretch litho mat is gonna be under full color transfer. So when you click into any of these categories, you'll get all the choices that are available underneath. Um, and then if you click on the product itself, that's where you'll be able to read more about it, including the sheet size, request a sample. If you've never used it before, we do lots of free samples. You'll be able to download the pricing sheet as well. And just opening the pricing sheet, you'll see this is, you know, if you buy the full sheet, this is the pricing. And if you buy by the image, these are the image sizes and the pricing at your various quantities uh, for that image. So explore that. I think you can make a lot of money. Right before I got on this call, one of my sales reps said, hey, we just sold five sheets to a customer and they fit 59 logos on the sheet. So uh, don't be intimidated by cost per sheet at the low quantities because you can fit a ton of logos uh, on there and be able to really have your cost per logo be very low. So. Hopefully that gives you an idea. That's all over at transferexpress.com. Uh, With that in mind, let me go back to my slideshow just to make sure I hit everything I wanted to. All right, we talked about Beyond the T-shirt with Goof Proof in case you're not, uh, in case you're joining late. Beyond the T-shirt with Elasti Prints, which was the other lower temp option. AquaTrue, and then Stretch Litho. All right, cool. I got through it all. So let me take some Q&A and then we'll conclude for today. Okay. Uh, yeah, stretch litho is not for nylon. Stretch litho is for cotton and polyester. If you go to any of the product pages, you'll see the uh, fabrics it's compatible with, but the AquaTrue will work for nylon. And at some point later this year, we'll be releasing uh, a new product called Ultra Color that will be like stretch litho, but also work on nylon. So we're excited about innovation and what we continue to do at Transfer Express installs. Um, and then Amber um, asks any word on when uh, Ultra Color is gonna be available. Unfortunately, no. And I hesitate to even commit to a time with this whole COVID-19 uh, thing. It's changed schedules to be unpredictable, but know that our team is on it working hard. We, we know this is gonna be a game changing product and really important to your business. Um, Hunter asked, does goof proof glitter sparkle like heat transfer vinyl glitter flake? I would say no. Glitter flake is a textured glitter. You're going to get the maximum bling factor on glitter flake. So that's just a heat transfer vinyl from stalls, you know, that you can cut on a vinyl cutter or buy pre-cut from stalls. The glitter transfers from Transfer Express, they're nice, but it's more of a, um, almost like a gel 
glitter, I would say. It has like a, a grippier surface where it's encapsulated on top. You don't get quite as much bling, but they're nice in their own right because you can um, you can do better detail and uh, you can mix and match multiple colors, which is kind of cool. All right. Um, Lee asked, what are our sheets made of? Are they reusable? I assume that's a cover sheet. So the cover sheet that I was using today is craft paper and it is reusable. The larger gang sheet image, uh, Joy, is uh, 11 and a half by 18 inches. That's for the stretch litho mat. And yeah, so if you have a waterproofing on the jacket, uh, again, I see that question uh, coming in. Um, you can always take like a denatured alcohol and remove the waterproof coating on a jacket. Um, that was one tip, but of course you're going to remove the waterproof coating on the jacket if you want that functional aspect of it. So you got to be reasonable there and not do it clear across the large area. But most people would do that for a left chest location. Um, as far as as far as I do, we you know we recommend testing. Um, I have a lot of confidence decorating these items because. Um, I know it's not going to be a product that's probably going to get laundered more than five times. It's very easy to test one, launder it um, a few times to make sure the combination works. It's impossible for us to test all the coatings out there because there's just so many. Uh, but testing is a big part of running a successful business. So order transfer samples, try it, wash it, and who knows? You may come on to something that everybody else is afraid to do and can be a nice revenue stream. All right. I think... Think, think, think. <laughs> Freddie says, please look into doing the individual images for goof proof. Cutting up over 100 sheets is crazy. Yeah, it is. So we do have the cut apart fee on goof proof, but you have to leave some space in between your design. So on the Easy View Designer, there is an option for cut apart, but you need to have you know the same design uh, ganged across the sheet. Well, this is a tough one. Matt asks, what would you recommend for a leather? softball. I think when you're doing those sorts of items that you're going to have more success with like um, our CAD prints product line where it's a polyurethane or a vinyl base transfer rather than ink. Um, my experience on decorating sports balls with ink is not very good, but you know, the ultra weed that we showed earlier, which is a heat transfer vinyl would certainly work there. Um, and then also any of the CAD prints uh, products from Transfer Express, you I would recommend testing those first. All right, as far as I can see, I think we are pretty good, at least as good as I think on questions. And so um, at this point, I really just want to encourage you uh, in your business, one, uh, to have a plan on who you wanna sell to, document what types of products that person can buy beyond basic t-shirts, really test and dig into these ink formulas and make sure you have the proper accessories and tools uh, to be able to decorate them accurately. And then really um, think about the key performance indicators and, and measure those over a given month or even a week and say, how can I drive more top line revenue into my business uh, by moving beyond the t-shirt and decorating more items. So again, I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stalls and Stalls Transfer Express. I want to thank you for watching. And if you ever want to see more content like this, uh, go check out the events page on either the Stalls or Transfer Express website, and you can register for all of our webinars and education. With that, have a great day and thanks for watching.